Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscript. This is episode 242, the pre-Friday, the rainy Friday edition. It's raining in Connecticut at 3 p.m. I guarantee it'll be raining in Florida. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. Today's August 10th, 2016. Okay, we're going to seem a little rushed to do this. Uh, George and I both have doctor's appointments today. Uh, I'm going to the dentist with the kids. You're going to a doctor for appointments. So we got to be out of here soon, and there's so much to talk about. Um, first, people are looking and say, well, where's George's bookcases? Did he clean out his office? Is there remodeling going on? What's going on, George? I'm on vacation. I'm taking first vacation in two years, and mm -hmm. I'm reading at home. I'm reading books and just in having a relaxing time and uh, look forward to getting back to church, but needed a break. I'm afraid to ask, but what books have you been reading? Well, I, my vacation started Sunday, mm -hmm. and I've gotten through four books about North Korea so far. The Aquariums of Pyongyang, Dear Leader, sure. uh, Nothing to Envy. Um, then I read uh, a book, a biography of Padre Pio, and then two books uh, by Gabriel Amor, The Exorcist for the Vatican. And now I'm working on a book uh, by the uh, Secret Service agent who guarded the Clintons when they were in the White House. So I'm I seeing a theme here. A theme here of, uh, <laughs> of uh, is it evil, evil or Satan or <laughs> alphabetical order? I don't know. Who knows? I bet I do see a theme. Um, and so in our pre-show, we're, we're trying to you know go through. There's lots of little topics to talk about. And there's nothing really big to talk about. Um, but right before we went to show last week, um, the story about uh, Justin Welby sending out a letter to everybody saying, clear your calendar for these weeks, next October. We're going to look into holding another primates meeting. And uh, wow, it, back to our regular scheduled programming. Um, it's not a gathering. It's not a, uh, you know, a, a little meet and greet. They're actually going to have a, a meeting where, uh, first time in how many years now they're going to have a primate meeting, George? I believe it was uh, 2011, or was it 13, yeah. where they had a primates meeting in Dublin? Was it yeah, 13? That will be the last one. So we're, we're three or four years out from our last official one. And I'm trying to think, well, is he doing this based on what he perceives as the success of the last meeting? Because I didn't see a lot of success. I saw... The primates to get, get together, the primates in agreement that the Episcopal Church should uh, come under the, their authority and that there should be consequences for um, having same-sex liturgies. And those consequences would be that for three years they can't serve in any capacity leadership of the Anglican Communion or any voting uh, area in the Anglican Communion. Um, and they assign that task to Archbishop. Archbishop says, I'll do better. I'll make a task force. And I've seen nothing but failure amongst that, George. Kevin, we need to divide this in two. The meeting itself was a success. The mm -hmm. primates meeting in Canterbury achieved the goals of those who were there. The implementation has been problematic or a failure. Mm -hmm. And we can't blame the implementation upon the meeting. The failure to implement the requests made by the primates lies in Justin Welby's hands, not in the meeting itself. And we saw the same thing when we were in Dar es Salaam. Uh, the primates got together, they were in unity, they said, listen, um, Rowan, who was the Archbishop back then, we want you to fly to Louisiana where the Episcopal Church is holding a House of Bishops meeting, and you need to get them to uh, repent for what they've done, and so we can move forward. And we're going to put this in the communique. Here's the communique. Go fly away. Um, Rowan, to his credit, actually went there. Um, but he sought no uh, uh, repentance from the Episcopal Church and kind of just went there and said, well, we're here to celebrate the uh, fixing up of Dornalines after Katrina. Uh, I'm like, well, that wasn't in the communique. Uh, so having archbishops follow through on what happens at primates meetings is difficult, George. Yes and no. It is difficult for the individual. 
There was no mm -hmm. problem for George Carey to follow through on the recommendations made at Lambeth 98 and in the primates meetings he chaired. There have been problems for Rowan Williams and Justin Welby. Rowan Williams was genuinely torn. He just, Rowan Williams is an academic. He's conflict averse on a human level. He loves mm -hmm. to argue the finer points. But Rowan Williams, I'm told, was, was close to tears on many occasions when he had to engage in things that he saw as discipline. So he just avoided it. Justin Welby, I still don't have the full measure of the man, but he speaks out of both sides of his mouth. He will say one thing to the primates that he'll do it, and then he'll talk and appoint a committee made up of the people who are supposed to be investigated to investigate themselves. So that whether was interesting, he too, wasn't it? Whether he too is conflict averse or whether he has a deeper agenda which we're, of which we're not aware, um, he's actually become more of a disappointment than Rowan Williams has been in my eyes. Well, if the primates were to go to this, you know, the GAFCON primates and the uh, primates who usually uh, uh, don't go to these, were to go to this meeting, uh, what should they expect, George? I encourage them to go because they have a successful track record at the meetings. Mm, and definitely. it's the implementation that is problematic. And they have the authority, by virtue of their majority amongst the primates, to take control of how it is implemented, how things are worked out. There is, I've been to more primates meeting than any primate of all. Uh, yes, I've never agreed. been. I've never <laughs> been in the room, but I have been propping up the door, as they call backstopping or door stopping the primates meeting, as a mm -hmm. reporter. Most primates only go to one or two. So up to a third of the primates at each meeting are new boys. And they don't know what to do, they do what they're told, and they have no knowledge of the history. And there's, you know, one of the complaints was, before Canterbury, we want to see the agenda first, because under Kenneth Kieron, they wouldn't be given any agenda at all until they got there. <laughs> they would they show would up and it's in the envelope. Here's where you oh, stand, here's about. where the yeah. pictures are taken, yeah. now go play and occupy yourself and look at pretty sights while the real business is done by the staff. Mm -hmm. That, the rules are that there are no rules. Uh, last night I watched the Treasure of Sierra Madre on TV and there's that memorable scene where Humphrey Bogart is standing in an outcropping of right rocks with a rifle yep. and the Mexican bandits say, badges, we don't need no stinking badges. The primates don't need no stinking badges to become the federales. There no, are no fact, rules. They the primate, the, the, the purple primate and, collar is their thing. Yeah. They're, see, the, pro, the past primate meetings have been gathering of equals, not a particular archbishop's tea party where the agenda is set by the archbishop. Some primates meeting have been run by the AC, ACC. Some have been run by the archbishop. Some have been run by the archbishops in toto. So if they go into this meeting with the knowledge, the GAFCON and the Global South primates, that they can take control of the instruments of authority, that if those, that there are, and that they set out the consequences for those who are supposed to follow through if they don't follow through. In other words, they yeah. should fire yeah. just to Saiwadai Wufaron. They should, yes. because he was supposed to follow through, he didn't. They should no. say to Justin Welby, you had a good run, you're not up to the job, we'll ask somebody else to take the lead. You're still well, Archbishop yeah. of Canterbury, but you're Did, not yeah. the boss of me, as my teenage girl would say. <laughs> That's right, yes. I hear that all the time in here. Um, it would be interesting to see what would happen if like, they had made Bishop Muneer uh, head of the task force to, to get follow through on this. Um, clearly the Archbishop uh, didn't want to do it, um, volunteered because he, uh, assuming he could just make it a, a quagmire and it wouldn't go any further than his office and that worked. It, that's what happened. But you know, maybe assigning the task to the conservative uh, archbishops would uh, uh, get things done if you so desire to show up. Because well, your success is... I'm, I'm just well, gonna, the, go on. I want to talk. I want to talk. Kevin. <laughs> me, me, me. Pick me, teacher. Pick me. The Archbishop boss of me. staff <laughs> is so grossly incompetent. I'll give you an example. Uh, mm -hmm. About two, three weeks ago, the Archbishop of Canterbury invited to Lambeth Palace a Pakistani Muslim cleric. And Justin Welby tweeted out, oh, see how 
of Modern as he tweets, Great to see Sheikh Rahman here. This guy is a hate preacher from Pakistan yes. who supports the murder of those who oppose blasphemy laws. That is oh, correct. I don't know. So Justin yeah. Welby, Justin Welby has no problem repeating false statements about the Ugandans are in favor of killing gays, which is absolutely mm -hmm. untrue. The man's ignorant, and yet at the same time he'll welcome someone who truly is in favor of stoning homosexuals to Lambeth Palace for a meet and greet and little soppy photo opportunities. Now, Justin Wilby can't be responsible for knowing everything about everybody. That's what you have a staff for. And his staff is consistently bad. They it was the second result on Google. When we Googled his name, the second result was how bad he was. So, yeah. So, <sighs> nothing's to think. And so, maybe we should back off on Justin Wilby a bit in that... Um, there used to be a governor of Texas called Ann Richards who would get up and mock George Bush and said, George, he can't help it. He's just not up to the job. He's no, ignorant. He was born with a silver spoon in he, his mouth. He yep. can't help it. He is that way. Maybe yeah. Justin Welby is that way. He relies yeah. upon others, and those others have let him down. Oh, it's a mess. But this is, it is a mess. Chaos is opportunity for those who are prepared, who do their homework, who know their own mind. And the yeah. GAFCON guys, if they just get together, ah, uh, boy. Well, I, think there's a, I think the important lesson here for GAFCON is if you're going to go to the meeting, be sure this, the tasks are assigned to people you know will follow through. Um, mm -hmm. And not just say, oh, I, I have free time, I'll do it. You know, mm -hmm. that doesn't work. That doesn't cut it. Don't um, give someone uh, else the authority to choose the instruments yeah. to make this happen. No, do no, it yourself. Was, all right. Uh, before we close up, I did want to cover a funny story that we posted on uh, Anglicaning. As people may well be aware that I am a gun owner. I think I have one downstairs in the closet. Well, maybe. Um, and so I, you would call me a, a supporter of the Second Amendment, maybe. Um, but there was this priest who uh, wanted to stop uh, a uh, store from giving away an AK-15, uh, AR-15. And so he said, I will just buy all the uh, uh, little raffle tickets and I will purchase it and I will destroy it and nobody will ever have use of this gun. And uh, that was not the end of the story, George. Oh, this is such a wonderful story uh, because... The self-righteous yes. Pratt gets his comeuppance in the end. This priest in Lake Oswego, <laughs> Did you have to say it like that? Well, yes, a self-righteous <laughs> yeah. Pratt, a buffoon, an idiot, a poltroon, uh, a feckless idiot, I think. Okay, feckless idiot <laughs> okay, is right. a better way to describe it. Yes. Okay, this priest at a moderately wealthy suburban parish in Oregon, a local softball team is holding a raffle to send the girls' softball team down to California for the semi-regional finals. And they're raffling off an AR-15. And he finds this offensive, and so he uses his discretionary fund and raises money, $3,000, to buy almost all the raffle tickets, and he wins the raffle. First stop and say, are firearms purchases part of your discretionary fund allowance? No. Uh, can you go out and buy ammunition? Uh, well, so he wins the raffle. And he gets on to the TV and the newspapers, basically signaling how virtuous he is. Oh, I'm taking this gun out of the hands of a would-be assassin and all this and that. Yeah, right. And he then proceeds to pick up the rifle, passes the background check with the gun uh, store who, who was offering the gun. And then he gives it to a parishioner to hold for him. You can't do that. And now I, as a gun owner, this, know you cannot do that. <laughs> And the Oregon State Police is now investing him, investigating him for the unlawful transfer of a firearm. <sighs> it, in other See, words, because... The, it, you go ahead, Kevin, well, what, you know this. What, what the ignorant priest did not know is there are so many regulations to owning a gun. Um, they, there's not just free-floating pistols and free-floating AR-15s out there. Um, th there's a book of rules just in Connecticut for the, the type of firearms I own, uh, the type of clips I can have, the type of ammunition I can have. 
uh, it is, you know, probably the, except for the environment, one of the most regulated uh, uh, industries in our country, George. Ah, uh, tobacco. Uh, yeah. Oh, tobacco too. Man, you can't even get vapor cigarettes anymore. Ah, that's crazy. So, uh, it, an uninformed person is going to face federal charges uh, for firearms uh, because he did not know the law. Uh, tickles me pink, George. So I feel sorry for the guy, but you know. Actually, the man who, he gave it to a parishioner who had a gun safe, who said he'd look after it. The guy who had a gun safe, if he's a gun owner, should have known better and not allowed his poor self-righteous priest to make an ass out of himself. Maybe there was a deep plot to get rid Maybe of this guy from there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Karma, one. <laughs> priest, zero. All right, that's it for this week's show. I'm Kevin That's what Coulson. you want to do, Vermont? Because we've done guns. No, we, we're, we're down okay. to time. We did go, and, gays, but God, but we haven't done gays. Or... Yeah, we'll, we'll do the Vermont story next week. Um, but uh, we're just running out of uh, things. The kids are starting to panic. I know you, your doctor can't wait to see you, George. So I I'm Kevin Carlson. I, I want to avoid going to the doctor. Yes, and I'm <laughs> George Conger. And you've been watching episode 242 of Anglican Unscripted.